that. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Chris, where have you bought me? Where so, have you bought me? Where are we? We are in Unstang Tomb, um, a 5,300 year old Neolithic tomb. Um, this, this place, these are all called chambers, and this was put with uh, bodies of our this ancestors. Was, these, these, so they put the bodies down here. They, yes, in fact, I only just learned about this, what they actually done. Was these here? I, I couldn't understand how it was done, but what they do is they let the deep body decompose outside, right? Um, until it's at a point where it can basically come in, and then have slabs laid on top of it, um, and then it's fully decomposed, and then they repeat that process for everybody that is buried. So you'd end up having a stack up here um, with skeletons in every single bit of. So it. all these chambers are just full of bones. Yes. Mm. And this is what two thousand years older than. The pyramids. I, I, I quote that from what I've been told. Yeah, it's, it's older than the pyramids. The same oh, with the tombs and the eagles. Um, which is, you think about it, mate. Humans have been around really for about fifty thousand years. But actually, as intelligent humans, you know, farming and all this kind of stuff, we've only been here about ten thousand years, or fifteen thousand years. No. And this is five thousand three hundred years old. It's amazing. It's hard to fathom, isn't it? It's absolutely amazing. And there's all graffiti on here. But it's just amazing that there was um, humans in the Orkneys. You'd have thought you know, be, you know, on the mainland you, you expect that. Yeah, yeah. yeah the that. settlements here, it's, it's incredible. And the great thing about Orkney is it's so untouched Yeah. Um, that this stuff is just here in abundance. You know, yeah. It's not like a, you know, bigger cities where it's all built over and, and, and everything. It's just here in plain It's sight. incredible how it's absolutely perfectly built. Yeah, yeah. Well, they knew what they were doing. I've always said that I believe humans were far more intelligent than what we make out to be. Mm. I've always said it, you look at the standing stones and everything like this, and Actually. yeah, I think it's just genius. And there's even uh, Neolithic graffiti down here. Oh, no. So whoever was buried in here, and I believe- Well, there's Neolithic graffiti, but it just shows you how man's always tried to leave its mark. Yeah, because exactly. You've got that. You've also got over here graffiti from the 19th century, the early 1800s, where everyone's just come in and- What a place there. What a place. Unbelievable. And, and you know, it's weird, Tim, because living outside and living that sort of nomadic lifestyle, um, I know it sounds really weird, but I think I, I think about this kind of stuff a lot. How are they here? Why were they here? And all this sort mm. of thing. And I think you start to become understand it a little bit more rather than just reading about it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and this must have been great for them to build something like this because it had given them focus, something to do. They were learning do you ever different feel techniques when you're... and more all the time. You know, it's yeah. Great. Do you ever feel when you're walking around these areas and it's really bad weather and you're in your tent, you think, oh, I'll nip into a tomb. I, I've been tempted. <laughs> you must have been. We did once. Jet shot straight out the tomb and I shot straight out after it. <laughs> <laughs> Never again. Well, they're built... They're you're obviously... in here, mate, so I'm acting confident as anything. Yeah. Just like this. <sighs> they're obviously built to last, aren't they? Jeez. 5,300 oh, yeah. years. Somebody laid this stone by... And a half thousand years ago. Incredible. And here we are. Here we are. Wow. History is an amazing thing. History is an amazing thing. That's all. It's amazing. Right. That's a good piece. We'll start uh, another little chat again. <laughs> I you're always so, mess around. You're such a child. Like, you're such a child. I'm so pleased to be a child. <laughs> it stops you being too serious, mate. Yeah. Right, Chris. <laughs> right, you <laughs> you brought me into a five thousand three hundred year old tomb hmm. on the edge of the Orkney Islands. Yeah, very special. <laughs> it's an amazing place. How does it make you feel place. having just just visited it? I've seen a few of these now. Well, well can you imagine that there was bodies in here? And, and in fact, this tomb particularly is special because, and I quote this, I was told that in this corner here, facing the entrance. Um, or, or the cairn, whatever you want to call it, there was a, a skeleton found. Um, I think it was bound um, on its knees, facing the doorway, um, for whatever reason. Well, so it was like a guard, was it? Maybe. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. But to scare off. Yeah, maybe to scare off something. Yeah. Or scare off evil spirits or something like that. We got in here, so it can't be too bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty evil. <laughs> we, we had some evil spirits yesterday in that pub. <laughs> Oh, great. Right, so did you ever <laughs> did you ever think from your humble beginnings when you were standing on that beach in Swansea mm -hmm. that one day 
you, the, your walk would take you to be standing in a 5,300 old tomb on Norton Island. No, no. Um, I, I had no idea what to expect, mate. Um, you know, at the time I was going through a lot of personal yeah. sort of things. So my, my goal, you know, obviously was to raise money for charity, but I also wanted to kind of clear my own head. Yeah. Um, be be before you started the walk then, you, uh, you lived in Swansea, but you're not originally from Swansea, no, are you? I'm from Reading. Reading, yeah, I'm Reading. Um, truth be told, the papers started putting out that because I left from Swansea, that I'm from Swansea. Yeah. And, um, you got the accent. I know, I lived there a while and stuff. <laughs> well, I have lived there a lot. You know, I've lived yeah. more in Swansea than I have anywhere else. Um, but, yeah, it was just a lot easier, you know, rather than have to go through the whole rigmarole of explaining my entire life story. I was born in Reading and then moved mm. there. Yeah. It was much easier when people just asked me, you know, where are you from? So yeah. you know, uh, as a bag. kid, but as a kid growing up, I mean, you'd move from... Reading, you moved to you in Ireland for a while as well. Oh, I've, I've, I've been everywhere. Well, this is going to ask you mm. because you're walking now and you're traveling around. Mm. Has that always been there? Has that always been in your blood? As a yeah. kid, were you moving yeah. around? I, I believe, Tim, um, it was half of my life's frustration because I remember reading a story when I was younger and it's something that's always stood in my mind. I must have been about five, six years old and it was a story of a little boy and his dog went out, they fell down a hole and found a cave. And inside this cave was, as funny enough, nihilistic inscriptions and, mm. and graffiti as such. And that just mesmerised me. And I've never forgotten that. So I've always had that sense of adventure. I've always wanted to do it. But stupidly, I let life get in the way. Um, bills, paperwork, all that sort of stuff. Mm. That, that got in the way of what my dream was, if that makes sense. Mm. And the longer that I've now been on this journey, and I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. I, I can start focusing on those kind of things again now. So this actually, is what you're born to do. Yeah, yeah, I really believe that. Yeah. And I'm not only born to do, but I love showing it off as well. You know, there's a lot of people that will never get to see this. Why wouldn't I show it to them? Because I'm sure they'll be just as fascinating. And I get a real buzz from doing that. So, yeah, what a wonderful place to suddenly be now where I'm so completely free in my own mind that everything I do, I love. Yeah. Simple. It's that, it really is like that. You Simple. literally are living the life you want. Yeah, I really am. And it's funny, isn't it? Because I haven't got anything. <laughs> No, you I do. got a bag. Yeah. Well, I do. I obviously have my beautiful daughter and, and my dog. And mm. but what I mean is possessions. Um, Pauline is a bag, and, and I just live off love, mate. And as cheesy as that sounds, but you know, I get shown so much of that. Well, I see that all the time. I mean, we've just been <laughs> filming and trying to film in Storm Ness. <laughs> and every ten yards we walk, we get stopped. Yeah. yeah. Well, we get stopped. You get stopped. Yeah. You're you've got a notoriety now. You've got that fame from your Facebook posts, from this walk? Do you know what I think it is, mate? I, I don't even think it's that. I think there's so many people out the day and age that we live in at the moment, it's very busy. Mm. Um, you know, not a lot of people can afford to go out and, and do these kind of things and, you know, just drop everything at a hat. So I think for a lot of people, it's something maybe they can relate to. You know, I, people can see my enthusiasm because I'm genuinely enthusiastic mm. about it. And, and they don't come up to me because they want a bloody picture or anything like this. They come up to me because they genuinely want to ask me questions. Oh, what was this place like? Where would you say is nice? And and be part of this as well, because mm. that's one of my favourite things on this walk is this isn't just about me. You know, this is a... I've been offered sponsorship from a lot of people, um, which I've refused because I don't want it to be about that. It's about people. Mm. So every time I speak to somebody and they're lovely, it just fills me with a kind of, yes. So I've got another 10 miles to do and I do it off the back of just being treated so nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're inspiring position. people. I mean, we were just walking through Storm Ness and... An ex-serviceman walked up to us, he saw your t-shirt, recognised you yeah. from, from what you're doing, and he stopped to talk to you, mm -hmm. and straight away there's a connection. Yeah, there is. Yeah. And he opened up to you straight away yeah. to tell you about his woes and his problems. Do you, do you, do you get that a lot? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because, um, because I've been open, I suppose. Um, mm. You know, I've been honest and open, and, and the longer that I've been on this, uh, the more happy I am to tell people about, you know, two years ago, Tim, I would have been too embarrassed to tell anybody anything, and I was just so shameful of myself at the time, because it wasn't going the way I wanted it, mm. and I knew it was my fault, but the more I've done this, and the more comfortable that I am, and realise that we all mess up, we all make mistakes, um, you know, one thing I've learned to teach myself, mate, and this is really, really important, important, that your past isn't a sentence, it's a lesson, you know, and it's having the ability to learn from that, that that will help you move forward. But if you live in it, and it does start to become like a sentence, but it isn't, you know, it's a lesson. And I've managed to snap myself out of it. And I think that's where people are enjoying watching, or maybe 
commit to that. Mm. You know, that that's, that's all I can think. <laughs> yeah. the truth. That guy that we we saw the storm there, state salesman. After he finished talking to you, mm -hmm. he left with a smile on his face. Yeah, and he yeah. didn't have a smile on his face when he came up to you. Yeah, I know. I've, made, I've always had this thing. Just wherever you go, you just leave a positive vibe, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you're nice to people. They're going to reciprocate that back to you. Um, and yeah, that's a lovely thing, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, that's why I always say I don't need money. You know, just little things like that give me a better feeling than than I could have ever dreamed on this walk. I never knew that was going to happen. I didn't know. Did this walk is taking. It's taking you on a different route to yeah. the one you probably thought you were oh, going to go totally, on. Totally, totally. I come out here to sort my head out um, and raise money for Safra, but it turns out that you know he's helping other people do that as well. And long may that continue, mate. I don't know why that's happening, but well, it I is. Do. And I'm, you know, I do, and you do, really. Well, you, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just it's, it's everything you just said. You know, you're putting out that love, and it's being reciprocated, yeah. and um, it's. it's Positivity breeds positivity, negativity breeds negativity, doesn't it? And yeah, sorry. Just, I never thought for one second that I'd be standing in a 5,300-year-old tomb with a hairy Neanderthal. <laughs> <laughs> you must feel that hungry. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> in a kilt. And, and flip-flops. Yeah, kilt and flip-flops. <laughs> Kilt and flip-flops. How does he do it? Why does he do it? All right. I think, I think that's a wrap.